Welcome to Things That Are Harder. Today we're going to talk about naming things. Names serve lots of different purposes and have lots of different needs they need to fulfill. Let's go through some general things to think about when you're picking a name and then some things that are specific to naming a game or another thing that is a product. In the general category, ideally you want a name that is understandable, that's memorable, that's pronounceable, and has a good mouthfeel. Then on the product title side you also want something that's ownable and has a nice word form when you're thinking about products you also need to think about sequels and as your names get longer you also need to take into account what the acronym is going to look like so let's walk through each of those and talk a little bit about them and give a few examples for understandable you could also call this informative dragon age has some good examples of this there's the gray wardens that's understandable wardens are someone who guards something gray is kind of in the middle between black and white kind of makes sense gives you a little bit of information tells you something dark spawn is another one these are dark some sort of dark creature just the name itself gives you some information that you can use to try to guess as to what it's going to be about when you're naming characters you have to be a little bit more careful when it comes to this one informative can work if you have a game where a character name like hero protagonist makes sense but otherwise you need to stick to something more understandable just something that's recognizable as a name otherwise you can get yourself into a position where you end up with names that seem a little bit off or a little cliche memorable is something where the name is something that people are going to remember or at least kind of remember elder scrolls specifically skyrim does something really clever with their in-universe names. Most of their names that are weird fantasy words have the characteristic of being very similar or close to or at least starting with the same sound as the thing you're likely going to remember the meaning. So Dwemer is the Elder Scrolls version of Dwarf. Khajiit is cat people. So you got that k sound in both cases. It's the same with Dovahkiin, Dragonborn. They do this for a lot of their fantasy words and it helps remove the necessity to actually remember the word specifically because you can remember kind of what it is. It's got a built-in mnemonic. A lot of these Skyrim words, Khajiit, Dwemer, Dovahkiin, don't necessarily have the highest level of being pronounceable, but they get around it because you don't necessarily need to remember how to pronounce them because you kind of remember that the Dwa one was the dwarves and the Ko one was the cat people. And even if you can't quite remember how to pronounce it, it gets you there because this is not a product that you're buying on the shelves where you have to be able to walk up to someone and say, give me one of those Khajiit, please. For naming characters, pronounceability is something that has about the same importance of any other word. You do want your players to be able to say it out loud, especially if they really like a character. You'd like them to be able to talk about it, but you might be able to get around with it with a few tricks. Memorability, on the other hand, is critically important. And some games or fictional settings can fall into traps. If all of your elves have names that start with H, you have a problem because a lot of people will remember your names based upon the first couple of letters. So in that case, you're going to need to give them some other trick to allow them to remember those names. Maybe all of the names are H apostrophe followed by something else that's distinctive. But in any event, if you have a lot of characters with similar starts to their name, you're going to have a memorability problem. Similarly, fantasy settings or historical settings can get into a situation where characters have two or even three names. Characters in the nobility might have a first name, a last name, a title, and then a seat name. So they could be Count, they could be Bill, they could be Smith, and they could be Lord Azurebottom. And if you are referring to that character by all four of those different names, then it's going to be difficult for some of your players to remember that this is one person and to keep them apart. Again, look for ways to leave some breadcrumbs so the players can remember who's who and can remember that Count, 
Bill Smith of Azure Bottom is one person and not four people. Mouthfeel is about specifically how the word feels as you speak it. And this is about two things, really. It's about the presence of a lot of sibilance, like s and f sounds, and the presence of hard consonants, the k and t sounds. Also d and p kind of hard consonants as well. The presence of these kinds of sounds, at least in English, can tend to change the emotional impact of the word. Something with a lot of sibilance can feel softer and more sort of more slippery. This is something that's highly subjective and I suspect probably also very culturally dependent. Honestly, mouthfeel is one of the places where product titles can get most caught up because it's so subjective, but also kind of important for something that needs to be discussed publicly for a fairly long period of time. For characters, this is an opportunity to maybe sneak a little bit of information back in. While you likely can't have a character named bad guy or misunderstood, by playing around with different mouthfeels, you might be able to sneak a little bit of that information back in there, at least for some of the more perceptive players. When we move on to the product specific characteristics, Ownable is about a word that you can control or a name you can control more specifically. If I type this name into Google, what's going to come up? Is it going to be your game or is it going to be something else because the word already has a connotation, is already a popular commonly used word? This is particularly important for titles that are not sequels where you're starting with a new IP. Because while Destiny now is dominated by that game franchise, before the first Destiny came out, that word was already out there. So its own ability was actually very low. And that can actually hurt you in the early days when people are trying to find out about you. For subtitles on sequels, this is still relevant because people will sometimes refer to your game by its subtitle alone. So Dragon Age Inquisition is Inquisition, Dragon Age Origins is Origins. So the ownability of that subtitle is still a relevant conversation. Another part of ownability is literal ownability. Your title choice might infringe upon a copyright or there may be an adjacent copyright holder who is feeling particularly litigious and might become a problem. So in cases where you are using a commonly held phrase or a word alone, it's something to make sure you're taking into account. Word form is two things. It's the word form that you create where you have your artist make an actual logo for your name, but you also need to think about what it's going to look like when it's typed out in normal fonts. If you have a lot of round letters near each other, that can look a little weird. It can actually cause your name to look a little unbalanced if you have a B, an O, and a D in the first half of the word, and then a lot of straighter letters in the second half. It can just cause it to look a little odd on the page, and you correct for that in your creation word form. But when people type out your name in Twitter or on Facebook, it's going to still have that strange looking form. When you're naming a project, you should at least think about what about sequels? Is the name too specific and we're going to be stuck in a box that's not going to allow us to easily sequel this title without a radical change of name or a name that no longer makes a lot of sense? Think as well about are you going to use Use numbers for your sequels or subtitles for your sequels. They both have advantages and disadvantages. Numbers imply a strong continuity from game to game to game. And there's some research that suggests that especially around number four, you can actually get a resistance to purchase from new people to your franchise because they start to feel like they are out of the loop. They don't understand the franchise and they may not decide to purchase 
purchased it. Now, once you get high enough into the nines and tens, that starts to go away again. And people assume that if it's made it this long, that they're going to be able to onboard you again. On the other hand, subtitles give you an opportunity to give additional information, but they do make your name a lot longer. Dragon Age Inquisition is a lot longer than Dragon Age 3. Additionally, they introduce a weird problem when it comes to expansion packs. Now, maybe you're not planning to do an expansion packs, in which case this concern is not relevant. But if you are, think about what your expansion pack is going to be called if you're using a subtitle. If you are Call of Duty Modern Warfare and your expansion pack is going to be Zombie Trampoline Party, how does that key art look? It's Call of Duty Modern Warfare Zombie Trampoline Party. There are two colons, it's three lines long. It's quite an awkward problem. There are ways around it. It's something to keep in mind. Related to the expansion packs is a problem that I would call a nice problem to have. If your subtitled sequel does spectacularly better than the original game or the original series, now you're in a situation where you might have lots and lots of people who may not even really be aware that this game has a master title. Skyrim is a good example of that. There are millions of people who aren't aware that this is Elder Scrolls V. They just know that it's Skyrim. The truth of the matter is if you find yourself in this situation, you can probably work your way around it because it means that you have a very successful title on your hand. For longer titles, people are going to create acronyms. Think about what your acronym is going to be because you are going to be stuck with it. I will give you an example from Canada. It's a long time ago now in the late 90s, two political parties merged. They were the Reform Party and the Conservative Party. They merged into the Canadian Reform Alliance Party. And I won't say it out loud, but there you go. There's, that's got a problematic acronym to say the least. It only had that name for about 24 hours before it was changed to the Canadian Alliance Reform Party, which has the acronym of CARP, which isn't great, but is better than the alternative. With that, let's go through a few different titles and let me ruin the name of all of them for you. Starting with Baldur's Gate, how is Baldur's Gate? Well, it's understandable. I mean, kind of. It kind of sounds like a place, which is true. It's an equally kind of memorable. It doesn't sound like anything else that's out there. It's pronounceable. There's no weird letter forms in there. There's no weird consonants. Mouthfeel is okay. It doesn't have a nice hard consonant other than the D in Balder. It doesn't have too much sibilance, so it's okay. It's ownable because, as I said, there's nothing else out there really with this kind of name, so that's good. Word form is fine, both the, the created one and if you just write it out, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's really bad for sequels because you end up either setting all your games in Baldur's Gate, which is not what we did, or you end up having to subtitle it and talk about the place it's actually set being set. So you end up with Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Om, which both uses a number and a subtitle because we were trying to avoid confusion. Acronym, yeah, nothing wrong with BG. That's fine. No, no problems there. So overall, I give Baldur's Gate a, a fine. It's a fine name. There's nothing really wrong with it. Moving on to Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age is a series. Is it understandable? It's it's not great. It's okay. You know, it's got dragons in it. That's helpful. Oh, as you may have heard, Dragon Age didn't actually originally have dragons in it, so that's funny. Without understanding the universe, you don't really know what Dragon Age refers to. The subtitle helps because it's origins. Okay, so that's probably the beginning of it, of something. It's not super memorable, again, without that context, because lots of games have the word dragon in the title. Good pronounceability, no weird words in there, just dragon and age and then Origins if you're including the subtitle. Mouthfeel is fine. Again, doesn't have any nice hard consonants, but it's got a D, so it's it's okay. Is it ownable? Yeah, it's kind of ownable. Again, Dragon used in a lot of games. So if you type in Dragon, it can be problematic. If you type in Dragon Age, sure, not really anything else. Might find some stuff from D&D &D about the different sizes of dragons. Word form is fine. There's been a couple of different ones. It's got a little bit of a balance problem because Dragon and Age are so different in length. Sequels, problematic because the first one started with a subtitle. And without context, that subtitle is a bit confusing. Is it a prequel to a game series I've never heard of? What does Origins mean? It's not wrong because the game is both the origin of the franchise and the game has the player character origins, but it's maybe a bit confusing. Then we had difficulty picking a lane whether or not it's going to be Dragon Age 2 or Dragon 
Dragon Age Inquisition, so we have bounced back and forth between numbers and subtitling. But the real reason why I say that the sequeling of Dragon Age was problematic was because in Dragon Age Origins, there was an expansion pack, and you ended up with this horror show, which is Dragon Age Origins Awakening, where it has two subtitles, and in an attempt to make it somewhat comprehensible, we smushed Origins down as small as we could, so it was still there, but it was out of the way as much as possible. And then acronym, yeah, this acronym's good, DA's good. You have to watch for it forming words by accident with DA, because it's the beginning of a lot of words. It's a syllable by itself, where something like BG, having no vowels, is much less likely to accidentally form a word. And that's probably why we'll never see a game called Dragon Age Minrathis Knights, much as I would wish for it. So again, fine. Moving on to Bioware's other big franchise, Mass Effect. Not particularly understandable. It sort of sounds science fiction-y, so that's good. It's got a good memorability because once you hear it, it's easy to remember. It's not like anything else you've ever heard before. It's nice and pronounceable, Mass Effect, but it has a really bad mouthfeel. It's got a lot of sibilance in it. It's got Mass Effect. It's got a lot of sibilance in it and so it does have a problematic mouthfeel. Mouth really ownable, not competing with anything else in that space. People don't search for either the word mass or the word effect on Google very often. Word form is great. It's nicely balanced when you just type it out in a normal font or at least pretty balanced, but the actual mass swoop is very distinct and very definitive when it comes to recognizing this franchise. It's been good for sequels because what they were able to do was they went with numbers, Mass Effect 2 and 3, and then when they needed to make a big change, they went to Mass Effect Andromeda. All of these are clean and they make a lot of sense, so it would be interesting to see what a sequel to Andromeda would look like. Do you do Mass Effect Andromeda 2? Do you do Mass Effect 5? Not really clear there, but I don't think it's an insurmountable problem. Acronym works really well. ME, again, like DA, you have to be aware that it can form words very easily. If you make Mass Effect alien tactics, you end up with the acronym MEAT, which you may not want. So this overall is good. This is a good name. Assassin's Creed, it's sort of understandable, I guess. I know what an assassin is. I guess I know what a creed is. So sure, before the first Assassin's Creed came out, was this memorable? Not really. It has a sort of genericism to it. Pretty pronounceable. I may be being overly generous there. Assassin is not a great word for mouthfeel. Again, lots of sibilance. It also has the word ass in there twice, which is is not great. Is it ownable? Pretty much. But I mean, again, it's some words that you've seen before. Word form is fine. Sequels, it's fine. They've been a little bit all over the place with sometimes numbers, sometimes subtitles. AC is a reasonably good acronym. It doesn't have any particular problems with there. So Assassin's Creed gets a fine. Bioware's most recent game, Anthem. Is this understandable? It doesn't tell you anything about what the game is going to be about. It's not particularly memorable. It's a fairly generic sounding word until you know what it means. Maybe it makes you wonder if you should find out more. At least it's pronounceable. Nothing really wrong with the mouthfeel. It doesn't have a hard consonant in it, which you could wish for. It's okay. It's not that ownable. Before Anthem came out, you definitely had difficulty finding the game if you search for Anthem on Google. Word form. The constructed word form is interesting looking. It looks fine. There's, there's nothing. It's nicely balanced. All the letters are the same width if you spell it in all caps, so that's good. It would have been fine from a sequeling perspective because you just number them or give a subtitle, you're wide open there. Acronym doesn't really apply here because it's a single word, so the tendency is to not acronym single word titles. This one's just kind of okay, but just to make sure that, you know, I'm being fair, let's look at a different looter shooter. Destiny, understandable, same problem as Anthem. It doesn't really mean anything, and if anything, it's actually worse than Anthem because it just sounds like generic, epic, awesome kind of word. It doesn't make you want to find out more even. Memorable, same problem. It's like destiny, I guess, divine, prophecy. Pronounceable is fine. Mouthfeel. It's got a nice hard T right in the middle of the word. That's nice. That is actually better than Anthem. It's got a nice des 
any. That's that's nice from a word form perspective. Ownable, no. You still can get Destiny Child mixed in if you search for Destiny. Word form is pretty generic. It doesn't have nice balance like Anthem does. The eye kind of throws it off a little bit, but it's fine. Sequels, they've just been going with numbers and then they've been just gone with a number with a subtitle when they've done expansion packs. That works fine. And again, acronym doesn't really matter. Doesn't really, isn't really relevant. It's just a single word. So again, like Anthem, it's just okay. Okay, let's talk about Skyrim. Skyrim, is it understandable? I would argue that Skyrim, even though it's a made up word, is actually understandable. It sounds like it means something. It's the rim of the sky, which is very accurate to the game. Is it memorable? Yeah, it makes you think, okay, this is something that I kind of understand. I'm going to remember it. I want to find out more. Is it pronounceable? Yeah, it's nicely pronounceable. It's spelled completely phonetically. Great. Good mouthfeel because it's got a nice k sound at the beginning. Gives it a nice hard consonant at the beginning. Ownable because it's a made up word. That's great. Word form is fine. Nothing really wrong with it. The eye again kind of throws the balance off a little bit. But the problem here is that this game isn't actually called Skyrim, is it? It's called the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. So you can't sequel Skyrim because it's not the first in a series. You have to sequel the Elder Scrolls. So when you sequel this game, you have to remind everyone the series is called the Elder Scrolls. Acronym is fine. It's good. So this is great. This is great. Skyrim is great, except it's not actually Skyrim. It's Elder Scrolls. So let's go back through that again with Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls. Understandable? Kind of. I guess it's some old pieces of paper, I guess. Is that memorable? Not really. It's sort of generic fantasy words thrown into a blender. That's not great. Pronounceable. That's good. That's nice. Mouthfeel is fine. It's it's not overly sibilant. Doesn't have a hard consonant. It's okay. Ownable. Sure. I guess. I mean, you could search for Elder Scrolls. You're definitely not finding anything else. Word form is fine. Sequels. I mean, they've made five of them and, and an MMO, so it's been okay. They went with numbers, so that helps. Uh, acronym. You see ES, I guess. You see ESO. So I, I guess it's fine. There's nothing really wrong with it. So Elder Scrolls, unlike Skyrim, only gets a fine. I couldn't do a video about names without talking about the Fast and the Furious. I'm not going to go through all of the different criteria for Fast and Furious. What I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to list all of the movies of the Fast and Furious series. The Fast and the Furious. Too Fast, Too Furious. The Fast and the Furious. Tokyo Drift. Fast and the Furious with an ampersand. Fast Five. Fast and Furious Six with an ampersand again. Furious Seven. The Fate of the Furious. And F9. And who knows what the heck Fast and the Furious 10 is going to be called. I bring this up because this is ludicrous. I mean, you've seen people make jokes about the Fast and the Furious naming conventions all the time. But in a way, it works because it is so ludicrous. It has memorability through its ridiculousness. It has understandability somehow. Like, it, it somehow manages to transcend this system. And I just thought we had to just bring it up and air this laundry and say it works in spite of itself. But I'm going to do one more before I arrive at my conclusion. Let's just talk about Star Wars. Is it understandable? Yes, it's understandable. Is it memorable? Let's say, think, is it, if it's 1970s, maybe it's memorable? I don't know. I mean, there's, you're sort of competing with the memory of Star Trek. Pronounceable, yeah, those two words are known. I'm going to argue that it's got a problem in its mouthfeel. And that problem is this. The words Star and Wars, when written down, look like they should have the same sound, syllable sound, and they don't. And that is a problem. Ownable, again, kind of competing with Star Trek, but not really. There was a lot of time between those. Word form is good and ownable and nice. And when you write it out, it's two four letter words. All the, the letters are the same width. That's great. Sequels is has been problematic if you think about it. I mean, the, the sequels have all had their own names. Now, this might just be the factor of movies. So maybe I'm applying game logic to movies. Acronym is nice. It's got SW in there. You get lots of things that make nice acronyms with Star Wars at the front. I give this a good, but I bring this up. I did this one specifically so that I can say this. Even one of the big franchises in all of entertainment has a name that arguably by a measuring stick is not amazing. It's good. It's fine. I will bring this back around and paraphrase David Gator and just say this. Name plus time equals 
fine. Any name can be argued and picked apart and critiqued to the point of making it distasteful. Ultimately, while there are bad names and while there are great names, most names fall somewhere in the middle and they're just fine. While it's worth the exercise to consider these things, make sure you're not getting an acronym that you're going to regret. Make sure that you can own this thing and it's searchable. One thing that's worth considering that isn't probably going to come up in any of your name meetings is the meaning of your name in other languages. It's worth a look. Don't stress about it forever. Ultimately, once people understand what your game is, once people get it, it's going to be fine. I'll leave it with this final story. The world of Dragon Age is called Thetis. T-H-E-D-A-S. Where does that come from? That comes from the Bioware forums where we called it the Dragon Age setting. The D-A setting. T-H-E-D-A setting. And that ended up being the name of the world. Is it a great name? It's fine. Name plus time equals fine. So why is naming things so hard? I would argue that naming things is so hard because it's so easy to critique. Almost all names have a flaw and therefore it's very difficult to arrive at consensus. But the reality is, is that given enough time, almost all names will be fine in the end and it will be okay. Hopefully I didn't ruin your appreciation of some of these franchises by me making fun of their names a little bit. If this was useful or enjoyable to you, please give this video a thumbs up so more people can see it. I will see you again soon. Thank you. And a very special thank you this week to my very first member. If you are interested in becoming a member, there is a link down in the description.